Hey guys, had a few people ask me how we make our feeders, so I'll, um, I'll just run through how we do it. Um, what you'll need is some 90mm stormwater pipe, a push-on end cap, which you glue onto the end of the pipe, a socket that's got a thread on it that sits over the pipe and you glue that on, and then finally you'll need a screw-on lid that suits this socket, it's got a seal in it, and obviously that screws on there, like that. By far the most important thing with these feeders is the float. So you'll also need a hole saw, um, that's a 95mm hole saw, and it cuts a disc that's about 91 and a half mil, 92 mil. Now the inside diameter of this pipe is about 87 mil, 87 and a half, and it's really, really critical that that float has no more than half a millimeter clearance all the way around it. Um, if you have more clearance than that, there's a good chance that bees can get stuck between the edge of the float and the edge of the feeder here and they can get wedged and the float can tip and before you know it you've got a feeder full of dead bees. Um, I've done that before so you only make, make that mistake once. Um, so you'll also need to do this properly a lathe to machine that float down to the right clearance. Um, I'm yet to find a hole saw that can cut the float perfectly um, you can get close, but not nowhere near close enough. Um, so I'll cut the float and I'll show you the lathe and we'll go from there. Unflate. Okay guys, so I've cut the float. That's a uh, shade under 92 mil. Inside diameter here is 87 mil, so I've got a bit to machine off it. And that, um, that gives me a good margin of safety to machine as well. So, um, all right, next step is onto the lathe. Okay guys, I've got the float done. Hopefully you can oh, where are we? A bit hard to see. But I've machined a, a taper on both sides of the float. And the fit is really nice. All good. Right, on to the next step, which is, you have to glue this bloke on here, but first of all you have to cut the slots where the bees are going to get into the feeder, so I normally push him on there, and then come down about sort of 25 mil from this, the bottom edge of this socket here, and I put two saw cuts in it about 25 mil apart on opposing sides. So I'll do that now. And I just use my drop saw to do that.
right guys we're back so two saw cuts two saw cuts um, that's about 3.2 mil wide any wider than that and apis bees will get into it so um, yeah the drop saw gives you the perfect width of cut there so the next thing we do is ready to assemble it so we're going to glue this base cap on um, just have to clean this pipe here with some acetone I'm just going to find that hang on a sec Acetone. Quick wipe up the top and bottom. Done. Um, PVC cement. No, it's not barbecue sauce. It is standard PVC pipe cement clear. Um, it is actually food grade once it's cured. It's safe for contact with um, human drinking water. So no problem at all there. A little bit around the pipe. Trying not to dribble it everywhere. Stick your bottom cap on. Just bit a bit of a turn that'll start to go off immediately um, doing exactly the same procedure with this top socket a little run of solvent glue around there you don't need much guys stick that on there and that's pretty much your feeder done. Um, you'll notice on these screw-on lids, and the seal's just fallen out, um, I've got these little raised sections here on the lid. Now that's for a, a tool that plumbers carry. Um, so you can undo that lid easily because they do get stuck on there after a while. Um, I grind these off, these three little projections off the top of the lid here, so it sits nice and flat because I secure this to uh, a piece of timber or something um, you know hanging out like that and I screw up from underneath the lid into the timber because it's really important with any float feeder that it remains perfectly still well not perfectly it can move a little bit but it can't be you can't hang it from wire you know so it's doing doing these ones or you'll kill all your bees okay it's got to be rigid and screwing it up to something is the best way to do that um, it also makes it a lot easier to manage uh, the ants and things like that will that will inevitably go for it. So the next thing to do is to get the float into there and I'll show you how I do that. Right, hey guys, we're nearly there. So obviously you need to be able to retrieve your float when it's sitting right down in the bottom of your feeder. Um, so what I do is this is a piece of hard black irrigation hose um, and then use a fairly chunky stainless steel screw through the bottom of the float and it's a good fit into this irrigation line here and um, that's pretty much it when you drop that in there it shouldn't just fall to the bottom it should be as it's going down it should be displacing the air that's in that cylinder so it should fall slowly and it does so if your float and I've got one here if your float makes this noise when you drop it it's way too small okay I'll try I'll try and set this camera up and show you how it should fall inside the feeder okay here we go see if this works your feeder in there and I'll drop it now and you watch how it goes down okay that's perfect absolutely perfect it's exactly what you want you can reach in and grab your float when your feed is empty and refill it but this is the smaller float okay if it does that no good even though 
it doesn't look too bad in there. There's way too much clearance on the sides of it. So that's pretty much it, guys. Nothing really to it, as long as you've got the machinery to do it. Righto, catch up.